Well, hello and welcome to mini music lesson with Alexis number two. Today we're going to be talking about a very important subject and that is dynamics. So as we slowly but surely kind of chip away at all of the strange symbols and words and abbreviations that you'll find in a musical score, I figured we would start with dynamics because this is something that we're going to encounter every time we open a piece of choral music. So we have to start with a definition. What are dynamics? So dynamics are a tool that composers use. Uh, it's a range of musical terms to convey how they want their music to be played. So understanding these will help you understand the intention of the composer and will help you more accurately uh, perform what they intended for their piece. So you might be wondering, what does all that mean? More literally, dynamics are how quietly or how loudly you perform or sing. So it is literally the volume at which you're making music. Why are dynamics important? Well, they certainly convey the mood of a piece. Uh, it allows you to be more expressive in your music making. Composers use these tools uh, to change the mood or the tone of the piece. Um, and different composers will approach this uh, in a variety of ways. Some composers are very, very specific about what volume they want particular moments in their music to be, and some are just a bit more uh, open-ended and leave a lot of those decisions to the directors or the musicians themselves. Either way, we rarely play music at the same volume at all times. Even within a single phrase or line, the volume of the voice will fluctuate slightly. So to sum it all up, dynamics is the word musicians use to describe volume or how loud or soft music should be played. Now the history of dynamics is actually really useful for us as choral musicians. Dynamic markings are of course very prominent in musical scores today. In fact, it's incredibly rare to see a piece of music without some sort of dynamic marking. Um, however, that was not always the case. Dynamic markings um, in the wide range of human history is actually a somewhat recent notational development. Uh, until the late 1700s, dynamics were rarely written in music. Really what occurred in the late 1700s was that instruments were starting to become more developed and they suddenly were capable of playing a larger dynamic range, so the distance between how soft and how loud one can play. And composers thought, oh, well, I can actually indicate at this moment how loudly or how softly I would like my musician to play or sing. And so they began to come up with words to describe the relative levels of volume they wanted their pieces to be played at. And the first composer who's known for doing this is a Venetian composer by the name of Giovanni Gabrielli. Uh, you can hear a little bit of his music in here in the background. He wrote mostly sacred repertoire. So very gorgeous music, very expressive. You can already hear the choir's ebb and flow of singing soft to loud, not huge, stark contrast just yet, uh, but definitely some dynamic shaping there already, typically getting softer at the ends of phrases and the like. So why is this history so important to us as choral musicians? Well. The reason it's important to understand when dynamics entered the scene is because if we are singing a piece of music that was written before the late 1700s and we see in our manuscript, our score, that there are dynamic markings, we know that those are not the dynamic markings of the composer. We understand that those would have been dynamic markings that were added by a modern 
editor many centuries afterwards. Why is this important? Well, because if you are doing any kind of early music or Baroque repertoire uh, that wouldn't have had dynamics included, then you're going to have to make some decisions and you're of course welcome to agree or disagree with the editor's assumptions. Whereas when you're singing more modern music, you're really going to want to stick to what the composer intended. So now that we understand the history, let's actually walk through the terms and symbols that were chosen to indicate certain levels of volume in music. This chart here lays it out really nicely for us. You'll see that it actually progresses from the top very soft to very loud. On the left, we have the Italian terms that were chosen to indicate these certain levels of volume. And the first is pianissimo, very soft. Um, then we upgrade to piano, which means soft. Uh, then we make our way to mezzo piano, which means moderately soft, up to mezzo forte, which is getting a bit louder. Uh, then we have forte, which is loud, and then fortissimo, which is very loud. And so here you can see that gradual progression from very soft to very loud, and that brings us to these symbols or abbreviations of these dynamic markings. Rarely will you ever see in a score mezzo forte or fortissimo actually written out. Instead, you will see these symbols here. So again, going from soft to loud, we have pianissimo, which is very soft, piano, which is soft, mezzo so piano, which is somewhat soft, medium soft, if you will, to mezzo forte, so medium loud, to forte, which is loud, and then fortissimo, which is the loudest. At this point, I should probably mention you may even see scores that take it beyond this or beyond uh, this extreme. You could see as many as three, four, five, six of these Fs, which means super, super, super loud. And reversely, you could see three, four, five, six of these Ps, which means super, 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 super soft. So the more Ps there are, the softer it is. The more Fs there are, the louder it is. At this point, I think I should mention something very important about dynamics. And when I found this particular image on the screen, on the internet today. <laughs> it made me laugh. You'll often hear me say in rehearsals that in music school they never sit you down and say this dynamic or mezzo forte is literally decibel level fill in the blank. Um, but here you have <laughs> a chart where they've attempted to do this. I want you to encourage you to not think of dynamics this literally. Dynamics are always contextual and they're often subjective. It really has more to do with how loud or how soft you are singing or playing in the context of a piece than literal decibel levels. So back to this chart, which I much prefer, uh, I'm going to draw your attention to these two terms on the bottom. Uh, and they are crescendo and diminuendo. A couple things I want to talk about with, with these two. First, diminuendo has two names. Uh, sometimes you will see diminuendo, sometimes you will see decrescendo. Okay, so these mean the same thing. Now, starting with crescendo. A crescendo is a gradually getting louder. So it's often symbolized by this image here, which can be really, really long or really, really short. It usually just goes right above um, your measure of music and it's encouraging you as this widens to get slowly but surely or gradually louder. Okay. You may also see this abbreviated like this. So C R E S C dot. Okay, so sometimes you might not see this symbol, sometimes you might see this. Okay. Then we have the opposite, which is 
diminuendo, and that is gradually getting softer. So similarly, if we use this symbol here, it just means to gradually get softer. You can follow the line as it narrows uh, over your measure of music. Um, and again, diminuendo, decrescendo, these are often used interchangeably. You can even see these two terms abbreviated as well. Sometimes composers don't use these symbols. So you might see dim dot, or you might see um, this dot. Whoopsie. Okay, so these are all the ways that we can indicate gradually getting louder or gradually getting softer. Another wonderful illustration of that, of course, here they use decrescendo instead of diminuendo, again, interchangeable. Um, but again, here's the piano symbol, so soft, gradually going to a forte, so crescendoing to a forte, and then the other direction as we decrescendo from loud to a soft piano. The way this would be laid out in a score, and sorry this is a little blurry, um, but is nicely illustrated here. So typically a dynamic marking will go below or right above where the composer would like for that dynamic to begin. Um, and here's a really great example of what a diminuendo or decrescendo might look like. And again, these can be of varying lengths. If the composer wanted to, they could start the diminuendo all the way over here and stretch it out all the way to the end of this line, which would mean that you're starting at a loud forte and gradually over the course of four measures getting softer. So that finally brings us to the last two dynamics on this particular chart, which sort of opens up a can of worms, these two here, um, of our more niche, more rare dynamic markings that you're only going to come across here and there, but they do exist, so they're worth talking about. Uh, the first is this one, Forte Piano. It's pretty straightforward. It basically just wants you to start loud and get soft, um, and directors or individual musicians can use their own judgment to figure out how they would like to perform that within the context of a piece of music. The other term here, sforzando, uh, what this means, <laughs> I, I don't know that I agree with, with this sudden accent. It, it certainly is accented, and an accent is a term that we'll talk about soon. These are musical articulations. Um, but in the context of dynamics and the volume of singing, um, what's more important is this word here, suddenly. So sforzando is suddenly very loud out of nowhere. And I have another chart down here that kind of walks us through this a bit more nicely. So that's these three here at the bottom that you may come across. Again, very rarely will the terms actually be written out in the Italian or in the English. More often than not, you're going to see these symbols. You're going to come across these here in the middle. Uh, but here's what they mean. So subito. Subito means suddenly. All right. So it's very much uh, like the sforzando we saw above. Uh, subito forte, suddenly very loud. Uh, subito forte piano means you're going to be suddenly loud and then very quickly change to soft. All right, and here's that sforzando, which again is very similar, suddenly loud, uh, but with an accent. And again, we'll, we'll talk more about articulations in the next video. Okay, so now that you're all pros on dynamics and you understand what all of these symbols mean, how loud or how soft to sing, uh, I encourage you to experiment with this a little bit on your own. As singers, singing at different dynamics is actually a bit more challenging than you might think. Uh, we'll do a lot of exercises in choral rehearsals during warm-up time where we try and practice um, this, particularly the art of getting gradually louder, gradually softer. It 
requires a lot of focus and a great deal of breath support, proper breath support, to be able to do dynamic shifts like this. Um, and so I love this exercise here, for example, for exactly that. And in case you have trouble kind of deciphering what all this means, if you just look here, at this example at the top, this is just to practice getting gradually louder from a mezzo piano to a mezzo forte back, back down to piano, right? So you have these different symbols that we reviewed and you can experiment. Again, these are contextual, so it's not forte is literally decibel level fill in the blank, right? But you can practice starting on a neutral syllable of your choosing, even if it's just a vowel, even if you're just singing on an ah, for example. You can start very soft, hold it and getting gradually louder to a forte, and then getting gradually softer. And you can again experiment with these different examples. And then here, the bottom two lines, this would be something like trying to do a crescendo on the neutral syllable like D, 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 right? You could do D, 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 or you could do that on a pitch or spoken experiment with it. All right, uh, but as long as you are familiar with all of these symbols, uh, you're off to a really, really great start. All right. So thank you again for joining me. I hope that you were able to learn something and that you were able to add just a little more knowledge to uh, your toolkit. And I hope that this will help you be even more successful in choral rehearsals. See you next time.